Hey guys, Dark Recycle and FPV. It is now August 4th and I did some flying yesterday. Obviously, like I said in the video, I was going to try to start getting some packs in, right? And so I did. Um, and in the video that I put, uh, I also mentioned about how I had had a problem. Sorry, I'm kind of cleaning up to say done. How I had a problem with uh, uh, the... Um, uh, holy crap. Uh, the uh, Rush, Rush uh, Race Tank, right? So this is the Tank Race Edition, right? And yesterday I had done a video on it and show that the uh, the uh, connection, the MMCX connection broke off, okay? And uh, you can't really see in the video here, or you can't see, I guess, in the video I'm showing you, but uh, it looks like it actually pulled the pad off. I was gonna try to resolder it, but honestly, I didn't feel like messing with it, so I put a new one on. And instead of using this uh, HGLRC antenna, which I do like the antenna, actually, quality's been pretty good, but I felt like maybe the weight on the back of this dangling out like that was gonna cause it, that's what caused it to break, because I flew 20 packs total, um, 21 maybe, whatever. And there was no uh, there was no crashing, right? So there was no hard impact that broke the quad, and, and the quad's sitting right here. This is the, uh, the uh, Genesis uh, XLP, the uh, low profile uh, five inch, right? So everything is good on it. There's no broken parts, there's nothing wrong. But here's the deal, uh, and I'm gonna do this here to make it a little easier. So here's a quad, and again, I'm, I'm really kind of disappointed in this, and I'm not, uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to try to get this off here. Um, I'm going to contact Rush FPV about it again, uh, or I'm going to contact him about it because it does concern me, but the second one broke. And what broke this time, I mean, it, but it was on a very small antenna, so I'll show you guys this in just a second because I want you to get an idea of, um, you know, the difference, and so... I thought, well, maybe it's heavier in the back end, so it just causes that, you know, that bounce or whatever. Maybe the the, the weight on the back of the antenna of the ACLRC is what's causing it to break. Uh, so I put a lighter one on, a much lighter one, and didn't help. Thing broke anyway, and there was no crashing. I mean, the videos are being posted, and they're only being posted because I'm tracking if I can do 300 uh, flights in the month. But I'm gonna open this up because I'm really frustrated with it, and I really think that. It, it, you know, it, uh, it should cause some concern because if you're flying and this happens, you'll see in my video, if you look on the, uh, where is it? Let me see if I can get this to work right. Yeah, right there. So if you go to that channel right there, right? And um, you look up uh, <clears throat> flight number 13, okay? Um, uh, yeah, sorry, I just got a text on a support uh, ticket. Um, look up flight 13 of 300, right? And you'll see exactly what happens when this thing, the minute it breaks, it breaks mid-flight. Um, and, uh, or it could have been separating at the last landing and, and then I noticed it mid-flight, but no matter what, I take off and then I go right past the trees in that video and everything's gone. You can see the actual from the Firefly camera and then you can see the video from my goggles. And I mean, it's all gone. And so I'm, I'm luckily flying above the trees and try to get back into a range where I can see again. But that is a real concern. And here it is again. So here's the, uh, and I remember when I was doing this video yesterday with you guys and getting this one ready, I added glue, I glued everything around it. Um, it didn't help. The piece still broke at the exact same spot. So now I've got two um, uh, race tanks that don't work. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So that's the VTX. Here's the antennas. <clears throat> this is it. So we're talking about using this standard 80 millimeter uh, MMCX antenna and then we had this HGLRC. Uh, they both broke. I mean it's just like there's nothing there holding them in. It's not strong enough. Uh, you know the way this is I've seen MFCX snap in the past, but I mean, it's been after a pretty big impact. Um, this didn't happen that way. So I'm really bothered by the fact that uh, uh, I've got two of them down. So I'm pulling the race edition out of my quad now. Uh, I'm going to find something else to go with. And I'm going to contact uh, uh, Rush FPV. And it could be something they could say, Tarek, you know what? The way you're mounting it is wrong. I don't know. What I do know is I need more out of my VTX than for it to repeatedly break at the same spot. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me, but it could be something that it could be my fault, uh, but I don't know because there's nothing in there that, I've done other VTXs the same way and uh, I haven't had that problem. 
uh, not, not repeatedly back to back. I mean, the thing didn't even last 10 flights. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna remove these real quick because this is our, uh, I've gotta take this one off and retire this VTX now. And hopefully Rush can give me a better idea of what the heck is going on. So let me clean this up. All right, now, when comparing the two, these are the two VTXs, and both are in the, I mean, they're identical. I don't know what is happening. I don't know what the solder, um, I have debated, uh, oh, my batteries are done. I'm getting ready to go fly again today. I have debated putting a regular tank in here, but the, the space is somewhat limited, and I wanted to te test the race edition. Um, but there it is. I mean, identical, uh, identical problems, right? So I don't think it's the weight of the antenna. As a matter of fact, I know it's not the weight of the antenna. Um, and then another note I'd like to point out is these two antennas, I don't know what it is with this Fox here, but look, I have to fly hard. I mean, the whole idea is I may not fly, but when I do, it's for my customers to test out stuff that we're doing, right? Um, this is the second Fox ear antenna to have the um, connection actually break off the end of the antenna. And uh, I had it happen yesterday and I had it happen uh, the day before. It's the only antenna I've had this happen to. HDLRC survived to the point where they ripped off the thing from the, um, the MMCX connection from the uh, VTX, but on the Fox ear, uh, this is the second one in a row where it's broken at this end. So look, here's my deal, right? And let me, let me just kind of, let me do this and I'm gonna, I'm, let, me, let me put it like this and, and, and make sure I, that the vendors and everybody understands, I'm not trying to piss anybody off, okay? You could tell me I'm doing it wrong and I'd listen, right? Because I don't know everything. I'm, I'm, I'm not great at everything. I'm not great at hardly anything, but I'm very good at what I do. Uh, and part of what I do is when somebody spends three, $400 with my company, I fly the crap out of a test drone before I want to sell it to someone, right? So I'm going to test all my product hard um, because that's what this industry is. It's a hard industry. We crash, uh, you know, we fly hard, we hit hard, we crash hard, and, and it costs us a lot of money including me, I mean, all of us, and it's sometimes hard to sustain. So when I test product and I see things like this, right? And I see things like this, I'm not, I'm not talking, I'm not trash talking the manufacturer. You could say it's my fault. And I turn around and say, why? What did I do wrong? Did I, did I fly wrong? Because this is the antenna and it was mounted to where this piece is inside the frame. I mean, but it broke right here. And it's the only one that's done this. Now, I'm not talking crap of Fox here by any means. It could all be me. We all know Fox here makes good products. But, this, but it doesn't mean that everything they make is great. And it doesn't mean that it doesn't need help, right? Or it could use some refinement. The same with the uh, Race VTX. These are two brand new ones. They have less than 10 flights each on them. Both broke in the same spot. Now, if you're my customer, you're going to turn around and call me and be like, Tark, this, this, I need replace it. And I'm like, I can't. What do you want me to do? Manufacturer's not going to replace it for me. So you're out the money. It's not my fault, but I'm the one who sold it to you. Now it puts a bad feeling between you and me, and I don't want that. So I'm putting the disclaimers that say, hey, look, this is what has happened. You may never experience that. It may be that I fly harder or worse or God knows whatever. But when you're out 50 bucks, 40 bucks, whatever it may be, and you need to order more, you know, it comes time for me to at least say, hey, look, just be careful. So please, to uh, the companies that I do say stuff about, understand that I, I'm not paid by you to, to say it's great. I'm not one of these guys that does reviews in return for product. I'm one of these guys that tries to make sure his customers get good product. And right now I'm concerned about this and I want to know what the reason is for it. And on, on Fox here, I'd like to know we still have an issue to solve with your mix camera. I want to know why we have ground going through the video channel <clears throat> on all the new ones I opened and why it seemed to interfere with my ESC. Still don't have an answer yet. So, um, anyways, guys, I'm not downing anybody and I'm not saying that I'm the best at this by any means. God, I suck at flying. But it may be good that I suck at flying because that means I put some of this equipment through a hard test. And right now, I'm not pleased with this. So I am going to change out the um, VTX and we will come up with something uh, different. Uh, let me put this here. Sorry, let's try. God darn it. There, all right, so we have this frame uh, and um, we need to replace the VTX. And then if you'll notice, I did get some new antennas in. I got a big Fry Sky shipment in. Um, and what I am going to do now is I'm also gonna replace the antennas on here. They kind of got chopped up yesterday. So I'm gonna replace those. 
so I don't have any more uh, uh, signal issues. And I'm going to show you guys how that's going to work here. So if you want to watch this video, kind of, let me see if I can just, I'm really not sure how I want to tackle this. It was not, this video wasn't intended for that purpose, but I feel like I might as well go ahead and get the damn thing finished. So let me go ahead and heat up this hot glue. Let's see if I can get this all to peel up a little bit. I have a feeling those antennas aren't even going to move. They're going to stick to the frame. <sighs> yep, and that's exactly what happened. So that's fine. I don't mind because they're getting tossed anyway. But I need to make sure that I can get this receiver free. There we go. So let me go ahead and take this receiver out. All right, here's our receiver. I'll put a new piece of tape down here as well. All right, so we're gonna put some new antennas in our receiver and we'll put them on the flip side here. Uh, and these are gonna be the RXSR replacements. So let me go grab a couple of those. So we'll do the RXSR here. Uh, I'm gonna need my old man glasses, so I'm gonna switch cameras here. And this way I can work and you don't have to stare at my big bald head while I'm staring through the old man um, uh, magnifying glass here. All right, now understanding that this uh, took a little bit of a beating, what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna run them sideways, okay? Uh, and um, I think this should, that's actually a pretty good angle. Hold on a second. Yeah, I like that angle. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this sideways, drop it down and run it underneath, I think, I think. I think that'll actually do pretty good for it. Let me get the Double sided tape. Let's go ahead and get some of that out. I mean, literally, the biggest problem I've had um, is the VTX, and it really sucks because uh, it doesn't make sense to me. I've got to tighten these screws down too, actually. I remember now. There's some things I need to do real quickly, so let me go ahead and fasten these down. Uh, I, I will recommend that if you do get this frame, um, I did not lock tight the inside uh, screws, and I would. Um, I'm still not doing it right now because I kind of want to get this thing done in the air, but um, you do get the frames assembled. I will not lock tight them uh, when, when they're assembled and I ship them to you, but uh, take it apart, add some Loctite just to do a final fastening on these screws. Um, anyways, outside of that, everything else is pretty, pretty well tightened. Uh, I just noticed that after like 20 or 30 flights, uh, I am seeing the screws get a little loose, but there's enough of them in this frame to hold it, uh, to hold this in pretty good. So let me just check a few things out here. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and put the receiver down. Oh, and I did use the, I did put LEDs on the bottom of this. Uh, they are green when it's not armed and red when they're armed. Uh, that is from the HDLRC PDB and it worked out really well. I, I was really impressed with how well they, they, they performed. Um, easy to program. Uh, all right, let me get uh, some heat shrink and figure out how I want to do this because these are gonna have to stay in to put the heat shrink on, all right? Let's do that and that.
Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to probably slice the side of this. Oh, you know what? I may just let it go on straight for now. Um, and then I'll just take whatever's coming out of it and turn it. So let me just put some glue here. Hopefully I can get this to cover that while it's still hot. Come on. Well, that might be the best I'm going to get for now. All right. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and shrink this down real quick. Let that glue heat up so it really sticks to it. Everything else done. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put my hot glue down right here because I like to reinforce it with some hot glue. And that is Gorilla Hot Glue, by the way, if you want to know. I got it on Amazon. All right, so let's get this fastened really nicely held down there. All right, so that's going to go well. Still have access to our bind button up here if we need to. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to just bring this out here. So I think best way to do that will be to put a line of glue right there and let's get this to press down on it okay let's do the next side hmm, sound of more batteries ready to fly Okay, so while those are cooling off, now I've got to modify, I've got to figure out what to do with the BTX, right? I've got to clean up this desk first. Um, and I've got to also figure out, uh, let's see, there, okay. So we've got two broken BTX, great. I mean, this has been a really, really expensive freaking uh, flight set of flights breaking me two feet TXs in two rounds and uh, you know I could see if maybe this thing pounded in but it didn't happen so I'm really not sure what the deal is but I, I assume that maybe it's not enough solder on there maybe the solder points are too weak uh, it's definitely getting expensive there you can see the two LEDs that run there it's pretty cool um, I was really happy with the way that like I said those worked out really well okay so the only thing is is this is the plate right this is the printout that goes here and so I'm going to have to make an adjustment because the, um, the antenna is going there now. So let me just mark, and obviously I'll re-edit the file uh, to accommodate for this. But I think all I'm going to do is just cut like right here. I mean, this is just for me to test with it. I'm not really, this, in, the, in the final, I would have it printed with this out. But let me just see if I can make a little gap here this one all right and then do the same on this side hopefully I'm lining it up right I don't really have time to worry about it but let's put another gap right there okay I think that'll do it let's just push that out Okay, Let's see if that'll clear. Maybe I'm close. No, well, not even close. But you know what? I'll make it work. We'll just push it out just a little bit. There we go. That should do it. Now we can move the wires just enough to get them to fit through here. Yep. And there we go. So we have the wires now safely going through the sides. 
All right, so those should be good. And what I will do now is just add a tad bit of hot glue on here just to hold it in place. All right, because I want this to not budge at all. All right, and I'm a hot glue fan, so that's what I do. All right, so let's just pinch that down there. Make sure we got it pretty solid. That looks like it's going well. Okay. Probably if I had planned it, I would have put the uh, heat shrink on it before I did that. But at this point, I'm just trying to move on here. All right, so now for the VTX. What the hell am I going to do? Um, this kind of leaves me a little stuck here because I wasn't planning on having to change the VTX out. But let's see what we got. Let me go see what I got. can try what I'm thinking is and I don't know if this is a smart idea or not I may regret what I'm, whoops I may regret what I'm doing here but let me see what is in this first so this is the regular tank and I kind of want to see what we got here okay so on the regular tank ooh, that's gonna be a problem okay so it has to go well it may not be a problem um, where is my solder pads all right so Ideally, I would want it like this, but that will not fit. It needs to almost go just like that, right? So the problem is now is the antenna will not be coming out the side like it's supposed to. So now I'm going to have to redo this whole thing. So let's see how we're going to do this. Ah, darn it. Maybe I just don't go with Rush on this one. Maybe that's the best option so far. Um, what if I... Do I have room up front? I don't believe... Nope. And I do not have much room here because this is a low profile build. Nope. So the best thing I could do is try to put this here, close it in. All right, I think Rush is out on this one. I'm gonna have to just go with something else. That's just the way it goes. It was designed to have a very small uh, VTX and this is not gonna happen. So that's out. <sighs> Wonderful. Now let me go see what else it's gonna use. Try the HGLRC4 VTX. Let me see if I have one open. Yep, I do. So that'll be easy. And I can do the new, I can use this one also. So let's see. We've got a couple different options here that um, I have used in the past. Both will handle smart audio. This may be the best option. Um, the problem is, can I get it to fit? And I think actually I can. So if that will fit right there, ooh, that's going to be too close actually. You know, sometimes I just don't have a good look. Damn it. Well, I guess if that's the case, then I may have to just run. Well, that's going to get in the way because of the... But this is just one big freaking mess, you know what? Um, so that's not going to work. Not right now, at least. What about this? I mean, that could work. I just have to modify it a little bit, but that could work. Let me see this. So if this could fit, Looks like I'm going to have to redo this. I mean, there are other VTX options. I just don't feel like going through all of them right now. But um, 
I'm looking here to see what other option I can go with. You know what? Let me just do, and I hate to have to do this, but let's just try this. Just because I'm not going to have time to print and or design a new print piece here for the back and still fly today. So, I, you know, opening here to be able to do this is very limited. So let me just take this off. And just fly without this. Let me get that up so I just put these wires back properly. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll fly without a back piece for now, just so that I can see which VTX is going to work best. And I think by doing that, I may have some space here. And I'll figure it out afterwards once I get this test flights in. Um, so I, my guess is that this is going to have to sit here, all right, okay, this will have to come back, and I'm thinking it will go under, we'll run side by side, there we go, let's do that, so if we run it side by side, that should, perfect, so that'll go, now the question is how to get this to fit, there's not much space left, so, Alright, so I think what I'm going to do is, let me just mount this now. This is a new one. Let me just see if I can get a, a used one so I'm not damaging too much of my stuff here. Because um, this could also work, I think. If I was to place this down here. Because of the receiver, so I may have to refine. I have to swap the receiver if this ends up being the solution. Let me see if I think I have a used one here. Uh, yep, I do. So let me just use that so I'm not ruining a bunch of stuff. Sorry, give me one sec. I have this new thing where if I take equipment down, I gotta hang it back up, or else I end up making a mess and that just screws everything up. Okay, so let's try this and this and see where we're at. Okay, so I've got a couple used ones here that I did for that we used in testing, so that's fine. <sighs> All right, so we're gonna mount it, I guess. Only way I can think of is maybe like that for now which will leave it a little exposed, but shouldn't cause any problems. Let me just make sure that looks right. Yeah, that should, let me see. That is kind of touching the receiver, but not too bad. Well, we'll just leave it a little exposed. What am I gonna do? I wanna fly today and I don't have time for this. So, let's just do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the tape here. And then I'm going to go ahead and start the soldering. So I can get this going. And hopefully, oh, no, I don't even think the wires are going to reach. Let me see. Starting to get really angry with this. Let's put a video. Oh, oh I should have done this different. Put the smart audio first, then I put the video. I think on this one I'm gonna to have to move the power because I believe 
that that power is coming from a 5 volt source and not a 7 volt. So let me just see. I think that might be 5 volt. And if it is, which I'm pretty sure it is, that's going to have to move. And I will move it probably. Where do I want to put that? I'll run it back here. So let me just get in here, do a little operating. Very tight fit right here. And I do not want to mess any of the other wires up, so I just have to take this ESC wire out real quick. Okay, now I can get to the power wire. that back let's clean this up let's put this back here nope. all right so now we do have a uh, I believe we do have a full battery connection right here so I'm just going to go ahead and tap this in here should give me what I need and we'll see if that works okay now in the meantime I got to get all these wires back down make sure that I mean this is obviously for testing so I'm not gonna put it totally finished because if I have to take it back off I don't have to work too hard at it all right so <clears throat> now the only thing left is to make sure that it fits and I'm afraid that with this with the receiver right there we're gonna have a small problem and I'm right we do so let's see how much more of a mess we can make with this well I mean I just got done doing this but it looks like we're gonna to have to pull this up too now what a mess all of this because I can't get a freaking MMCX to stick on the damn BTX. The waste. That is hot. Come on. There we go. So now what I'm thinking is we'll find a place for the receiver, but for right now it looks like the bottom part of this frame might be the best spot for the ETX, right? So like right here. That may work, and if that's the case, I believe that this would then sit, could very well sit like this perhaps, and that opening might line up, but we'll see. Getting too much crap on my clock here real quick, so let me just see what I got. Okay, that's not going to work. It would have to be redone, but it's an option down the road at least. All right, so I think what I'll do is I'll uh, I will go ahead and put some double-sided tape right here for the VTX because without a doubt the VTX is going to have to go somewhere right around there and then I will find a spot for the receiver that will make sense okay so let's just do that so we can get the heck back in the air soon all right so let's just take this all right let's put this there okay
go. We'll go ahead because we're going to commit ourselves to doing this now. So let's just go ahead and get that done. <sighs> okay, now, where's the top here? Here's our top plate. So the only thing that I need to figure out is how to get this receiver into a good spot. Right? And it is all kinds of tangled up now because... Um, Sorry guys, that all that noise is my phone, so I'm gonna have to take those in just a minute, uh, so I can see who it is that's trying to get in touch with me. Um, all right, so let me see how much space I have now. If I get the receiver, just leave it there for the time being. Okay, so on the back end of this, I can't win with this damn thing. Um, well, that's cool. Let's just go ahead and commit to it. Say bye to this. Thank you. Well, time to wait. Okay. I don't need that piece anyway, I'm not really sure. Alright, so I think we clear that. Shouldn't be shorting that out, so that's good. Alright, now all we gotta do is find the receiver. So where are we gonna put this receiver? Well, we have an option of putting it somewhere where we can get clearance. Now where the hell is that gonna be? Oh man, this is all going bad quickly. <sighs> all right, well, looks like this is gonna be more of a problem than I thought now. So I'm going to try to save this VTX as best I can. Not the VTX, the receiver, but I now have to reopen it because in all of the changing and stuff, the antenna has pulled back off. And that sucks. So let me go ahead and get this tape off. And then let's cut open this heat shrink. And do it all over again while finding a better spot to mount the receiver. Okay, everything on there is intact. Let's just get this back on, and I will deal with finding a spot for it here. Short one. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down 
before I put the heat shrink, give them time to set because I do not want these breaking. Usually I do this before, but I kind of did it backwards and you know I'm paying the price for it, obviously. All right, in the meantime, my uh, RX came off here because I was pulling all that uh, receiver through it. So let me just go ahead. <coughs> Okay, I left that a lot longer than it normally would be, but I want to protect my antennas as much as possible uh, because this thing is going to be buried in here pretty good. I don't want to deal with the antennas coming off again, so that glue I put on there should be melting nicely. Just press it down there. All right, so that should be good. Now, the one thing that I do know is that this cable, I designed it to go across. And so my concern now is that this may be where I lose my room here. Um, so the question is, can I fit the RX, let's say, right above the ESC here, or basically under the plate? And I think I can do it under the plate. If that works, we'll find out real quickly. So if I can lay this here, then it should work. But let's see. So it is going to be just a bit, actually, let me go under here. There, like this, right? And this should fit nicely, and it does. And there's clearance there. So we have the clearance for that. We need to spread these wires sideways so we can tuck these right here so they can stay uh, hidden and not press against the frame because we are still going to be fitting our um, lipo uh, battery strap through this too right so this has to fit like this i guess i'll go that way this way no this way no let's go that way 
Okay, so that's got to fit there. And then this has to fit here. And to be honest with you, I think we are good. All right, so let me just, one thing I am going to correct is this uh, wire here. The way I did it, it needs to go under, not over the motor wires. So let me just fix this real quick. This way I can tuck it underneath. So let me just kind of get that out. And let's move these motor wires out of the way. One, two, move these out of the way real quickly. And I can get that red wire to the battery pad and then it doesn't get in the way. Right. Move just a bit. Right. Yeah. All right. So that should be good. Let me verify that. I don't like it. I don't like that either. should do it. Now that can stay tucked inside those wires. These wires can then lay properly beside all this and that lid should be able to go on there nicely. Okay, okay, okay. for the receiver <sighs> and if I just not put that there if I just had it come out like here let me see because that was just a test run to see how I wanted the wiring to go but if I can just make it for now fit then I'll know that in future builds we'll just have it come out here right like that and that way that can sit there so if we did that this would be like here. And so, oh, you know what? That would be great because I could put the binding button right there. Well, that might be a blessing. So let's see, that might actually work out pretty cool. Let's go ahead and put some tape right here. Okay. And I wonder if we can Get the binding button to show up. Look, where is it? Right there. Yep, I think that'll work out good. We leave that right there. If we can get that to stay, then we'll be able to access our binding button without any issues. Okay? The antennas are long enough, and I can still run. <clears throat> the zip tie without hitting. Yes, this should work out well, hopefully. So let's see if I can get this zip tie to get through here and under the antenna. Oh yeah, that's gonna fit nice. So we're gonna do that. 
and I can secure the camera stand again on the Firefly. Interfering with the receiver. There we go. Receiver's in place. We will just bring out the power wires for now. The LiPo wires, that is. And we are pretty golden here. Um, it'll just be a note to make in the future that the wires will come out on this side only then. Now, for the antenna, I mean, this is pretty simple. We can either come out the front and run them along here, right? Which is probably the best idea. We still have to get that strap through here. So this is the only thing that is changing a little bit is this. And it's this area here. So I would have to do something about that in the future, but right now I'm not gonna mess with it. So we can put our lipo strap right here like this. Let me just put some screws in here to hold this down. And I think we're actually pretty good. I'm gonna get a good look at it once I do that. All right, so let's see. Yep, that looks good. That'll sit nicely. That's protected. And so we can just run the antenna wires at the side. Cool. Let's go ahead and do that. And then we can close this up and see if we can fly it again. There's always modifications to be made. Just when you think you got it, nope. Always something new. It's best to just be prepared for that because got to improvise a lot all right so that's all that you know what look at that that'll be great too because we extended the clear heat shrink on the receiver i can then squeeze these two antenna heat shrinks inside oh i can try there we go look at that that'll be perfect so those are going to sit really protected now i'm gonna go ahead and hit those with some heat start getting all that to shrink down and then carry it out that done I think our ability to run these out is going to come out really good we could even you know, run them out let's just run them out sideways so we can at least close this up and then we'll figure out from there how we want to you know spread them uh, on the arms I guess so let's go ahead and close this up there we go so I'm going to go ahead and put my screws down here We'll have to get these phone calls so as soon as i get this done i will stop the video and then we can pick up where we left off here shortly after All right, let's get the antennas there and you know what i think this is going to be actually pretty stout all right a couple things that we know now that we can change during assembly one of them being this wire but that's going to be good for the lipo and the other one being how we route <clears throat> the VTX and then this way we can or the receiver this way we can have different VTX and not have to be stuck with one specific style, type um, which normally I don't really tie us down to one anyway but I really was hoping that that rush that racing edition would work for the tank and unfortunately it's just not strong enough now as far as the back goes I'm leaving it open for now uh, I don't know if you can see that but let me zoom out of here and go to this camera instead Okay, so as you can see, I'm leaving the back off right now, which would be this piece, but it will be easy to make it because all this fits within it. 
Uh, I'll just have to redesign it because it, I would put it in like this, but it's going to be just shy. So for now, I'm just going to fly this open. It's not a big deal. Um, it's not going to do anything to the setup at all. Uh, but uh, it'll be good to, like I said, to <clears throat> it'll be good to fly, but then we'll come up with something that looks really cool in the long run. Now, for the um, receiver wires, I think what I'm going to do is, uh, let me see, I will just um, most likely trace the pattern here and come down on the inside of this one. So let me just do that real quick. And to do that, I will just run some glue and I'm gonna bump this up. Well, now that I know I'm gonna do this, I would have bumped this up, but I think what I'll do is I'll just run some glue right here, right, right underneath, just like that. This way we can get this to hold in place. And I'll just come down with the motor wire, come down to here, drop that in there. And normally I wouldn't be putting my fingers on it, making it look so nasty, but I don't care, I just wanna fly. And this is good for testing. So we'll let that go there. And we will run our new um, zip ties. So let's do that. two and I think what I'll do here is I will just play around with this just because I don't want to mess with it too much but oh I don't know we'll just I don't like this for all I care it really won't make a difference for now for me I just want to get the quad in the air now, in the final version, obviously, when it comes time to assemble it to someone else, I will have planned for something nice, nicer, but uh, for right now, <laughs> I just want to fly. All right, same on this side. actually kind of prefer to run it on the top like that and then bring it down uh, that may actually work out better for not putting too much stress on it but again we'll see how it does because I could oh, we'll see if that works not sure how that's going to pan out actually fingers now. Wonderful, wonderful. And let's finish this up. Okay. Well, for now, 
Looks like we got ourselves a quick repair, well, somewhat quick. Um, hopefully everything tests out fine. Guess I could power it up and see. Now look, there's a chance that when I power this up, this video is gonna freeze. So if it does, I apologize ahead of time. The whole thing could explode for all I know. I have no idea if this is even gonna work properly, but let's give it a shot and see. Okay, now I know there's no antenna on the VTX, so don't give me a lecture about it, please. I do not rush to put antennas on immediately. I just wanna see if the thing blows up first. And now I gotta find an antenna. So let's see what I wanna use. I think we'll start simple and go with the another HCLRC, MFCX. Okay. And we'll plug that in right here. Knowing that, I mean, hopefully we have a strong enough connection that doesn't snap, right? So let's turn this on and make sure we have some form of video. And there we go, we do. So we've got everything working, looks good. Um, and I guess that's it. So we're gonna get ready to go fly and see how it does. All right guys, so uh, that's pretty neat. I mean, you know, I know, look, I know it's not the cleanest build right now, but that's because um, I have to try different things here and I don't feel like taking two hours to put a clean build uh, just to find out I've got to change some stuff around, okay? So we're gonna take this out and go fly it. We're gonna see how it does. Uh, we've got our new VTX on the back and I have a feeling that this is, it's probably gonna be susceptible to snapping as well, but I'm gonna do, to be fair, I'm gonna do the same thing on this VTX I did on the, Rush, and that is I'm going to hot glue it, and um, hopefully that'll reinforce it a little bit, and maybe even put, I may just put something here underneath, but usually I wouldn't have it hanging out this much. I don't have the plastic piece here to go over it like I did on the Rush, but I will, if I know that this is going to work, then I'll do that, okay? Uh, so I'll keep you posted on how it does. Thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all. If you need anything, hit me up at targetcyclonefpv.com. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Hey, there it is. Yeah, subscribe to that. And follow us, or however you like us on whatever that is. Uh, there's my email address if you want to email me with any questions or comments. Um, and I guess that's it. I don't have any more things to throw up there. See you later. God bless. Have a safe Sunday. Talk to you soon. Bye.